Hi, my name is Pragyan, and I'm from Karaka. Kia ora, my name is Arva, and I'm from Karaka. Time for the Karakia. Manao mai te mori nuku. Manao mai te mori rangi. Ko te mori tayo. Ke mo he mori te pua. Ke pakaru mai te po. To mai te mori. Homye huye ta kie. Today's date is 16th November 2021, Tuesday. The date in Tereo is Ratu Tacoma Ono Feru Arangi. I'm very happy to Zinging We and Bella Heck. Have an um, have a amazing birthday. Now it's story time. Have a great day. Bye. I lived in a little town of Le Quenois in northern France. And there's the little girl. Its name is pronounced Le Quenois. Le Quenois was built as a powerful fort. It has thick, low walls to protect it. These are called ramparts. The town is surrounded by ditches filled with water. These ditches are there to stop people tunneling under the wall. The town is on high ground above two rivers. Le Canois has a very important connection with New Zealand. This started at the end of the First World War in 1918. The connection has continued to this day. And there's the little girl who's going to be telling us the story. I was about five or six when the Germans came. This was the start of the war in 1914. All the young men of our town had been called up to defend France and fight the Germans. We were expecting a big victory and the war to end quickly. Can you see the little girl saying goodbye to her daddy? And all these men dressed to go to war with their families waving goodbye. Brothers, fathers, sons. We were so wrong because the war didn't go quickly. It was very long, children. For four years the war went. Just weeks after our young men left for the war, the Germans arrived. We were very frightened. It was a terrible time for us. Look at their faces. Oh. The Germans took anything they wanted. They sent most of the fit men who remained in the town to work in Germany. We did not see them again for years. Anyone who complained was thrown into jail. There was very little food too, and the Germans took most of what we had. I remember that I was always hungry. This lasted for four long years. At the end of the fourth year, we could hear the war getting closer and closer to Le Quenois. We hoped that one day soon our town would be free. At the end of October in 1918, the guns sounded like they were just outside the town's walls. We were very worried. We knew other towns had been destroyed when the fighting reached them, and we knew that the Germans would not give up easily. Our town could be destroyed and many people killed. How frightening for them, children. But this didn't happen. On November the 4th, 1918, New Zealand soldiers surrounded Le Quenois as so the Germans couldn't get away. These soldiers had come from the other side of the world to help France. They didn't want to hurt us when they rescued our town, so they were very careful and clever in the way they did it. To liberate Le Quenois was going to be very hard. 
Our town is located on high ground. Above the rivers and thick walls were good places for the Germans to hide their soldiers, their guns and their machine guns. An aeroplane flew over the town and dropped a message to the Germans asking them to surrender. Do you know what surrender means, children? It means give up. You know, put your hands up and say, I give up. So I saw this happen in my, with my own eyes. There she is looking out, even trying to touch the papers as they come down. The New Zealand soldiers asked the Germans three times to surrender to the town, but each time the Germans said no. The New Zealanders knew they were going to have a hard fight if their soldiers were going to rescue Le Quinois. They used their big guns, but only on the walls where the Germans were and on the islands in the moat. When we heard the sound of their guns crashing into the ramparts, we thought our town was going to be destroyed. We were so scared that we all hid in the cellars of our houses. Just imagine that, children, trying to go downstairs and hide down really low in the cellars of their houses. They have these special places. If that happened to us here in New Zealand, where would you hide in your house to get away from the fighting? We were so scared we all hid in the cellars, but no shells landed on the town. That was good, wasn't it? The New Zealand soldiers then fired smoke and burning oil into the town's walls. The burning oil drums were really terrible because a big sheet of flame would erupt skywards as they would fire it. Then there would be a loud whooshing noise and the drums descended and burst into flames on the ramparts. This created so much smoke that the Germans couldn't see what was happening. It really scared them too. The New Zealanders also used lots of machine guns to fire at the German defenders hiding on the wall. Many times the New Zealand soldiers tried to sneak into the town, but the Germans always stopped them. Then a miracle happened. Some soldiers reached the inner ramparts without being seen. They used a ladder to climb the last wall into the town. Oh, clever Kiwi soldiers. The first man up the ladder was a young officer called Leslie Averill. When he reached the top of the wall, Lieutenant Averill saw the, some Germans hiding behind the bushes nearby. He fired his revolver at them and they ran away. Now that the New Zealand soldiers were in the town, the Germans decided to surrender. They opened one of the main gates and let the rest of the New Zealand soldiers enter the town. Le Quinois was saved. What a day that was. Our people went wild with joy. We gave the soldiers who saved our town whatever we could. I gave them flowers from my garden. I also gave a French flag I had kept hidden. I waved it a lot that day. Other people gave the soldiers cakes, apples, wine and bread, even though they had very little food themselves. We were so happy. Later, though, we were sad, too, because many of the New Zealand soldiers had been killed or hurt to liberate our town. We promised never to forget those people who had come from so far away to free us. And we never will. They will still remember them to this day.